anyway, we appreciate Peter coming to speak to us today. If you're not aware of who Peter is, he's from Jigsaw Trading. Jigsaw Trading is a day trading platform that uh, we offer at our brokerage services with, at DeCarly Trading. Our clients are able to use Jigsaw Trading. They also have some fabulous trade journaling, journaling software. Uh, they call it Journalytics, which is great. So if you're interested in finding software that makes it really easy to record trades, profits and losses, stats, those sorts of things, it's great. So you can find some information on our website or send us an email or send Peter an email and he'll be able to uh, get you some info on that. I'll go ahead and pass it over to Peter. We're excited to hear what he has to say. Okay, thank you, Carly, and uh, welcome, everyone. Can I just get a why in the chat, if you can hear me okay? In this fairly short presentation, what we're going to talk about is we're going to attack an issue that is often glossed over in trading. Let me just bring the disclaimer up. I don't like to read that to you. I'll let you read it yourself. Um, the thing that's often glossed over in trading is the fact that most traders would fail even if handed a profitable setup. Now, before I do that, let me explain how I know this. So this fellow is me. Uh, that's me in a proprietary trading firm in London. That's one of many proprietary trading firms I work with. Now, the people I work with at these firms are the traders, the management, people in charge of the education and trader development programs. Now, obviously, I also work with retail traders, people at home, often who year after year have been trying and failing to profit from trading. So today I promise to give you something that will help, something that will improve your understanding of the markets in just a few weeks. It's not going to turn you into Warren Buffett in a few weeks, it's just going to make you better. Something that's going to make you finally feel like a trader. Something that's probably outside of your comfort zone right now, but this isn't going to be your typical trading webinar anyway. So please relax now, and just as you relax, let's just consider something together right everything you've already tried in trading got you to where you are now that goes for me that goes for carly that goes for everybody who's in trading right everything we've tried got us where we are now if you aren't where you need to be in trading or where you want to be then doing more of the same might not be the right thing to do and i don't just mean the same in terms of techniques I mean the same in terms of approach, right? Like look for a setup, try it, fail, look for a setup, try it, fail. It's that kind of repeating that approach. So we need to do something different, but different to what? Well, in the retail world, the traders that get nowhere are the ones that focus on this question and nothing else. Now, I was recently in a prop firm where a trader made a 15-minute trade on the Mexican peso futures and I think the profit on that trade was just under $20,000. And it just made me laugh because I said to him, look, what on earth do you know about the peso? And he said it was going up, so I bought it. Now, that doesn't mean you should just go out and jump on every move up in the peso, but it does highlight a couple of important things. First, a setup must have a cause. There has to be a reason for the buyers to buy after you. Momentum traders trapped, profit taking, they're just some of the reasons. And second, you have to get good. So if I gave you a setup today that yielded an average of 20 ticks a winner, you'd probably make five. You'd miss some. Your fat fingers would buy instead of sell sometimes. You'd take some trades that didn't fit the rules. Your trading would not reach the full potential of the setup the first time you traded it, which is why so many things appear not to work. They work, but it takes time to develop the skills in that particular approach. What happens, though, is you try something new, and it appears not to work. So the answer most uh, look to is to add more complexity to do more stuff. And then you end up knowing lots and lots of things superficially, but nothing really in depth. And that's why a lot of you have got six screens jam-packed full of indicators, lots and lots of stuff, $5,000 set up on there, but you still lose money, right? The guy in the prop firm trades off a very simple, uh, very small amount of information, and he's very profitable. Okay, now I do coach traders, and you can't buy that coach, and it's invitation only, it's not advertised, and each of the students that I have 
doing that coaching, they all have a different question or a different answer to this question because the entry is just one element of trading. But to develop as a trader, you need to learn a method, not a complex method, but you need to learn it deeply. You need to understand it. You need to understand when it works well. You need to understand when it works not so well. Now, as volatility over time sweeps up and down, it's, volatility is kind of like a wave. It sweeps up and goes down. Um, you know, you learn your method, you trade it, you analyze the results, and you analyze how the volatility is impacting your setup. You use those results to teach yourself how to progress. It's what's known as a feedback loop. Now, most retail traders just focus on finding some rules that define an entry, and then they want to focus on clicking buy and sell. There is no process of improvement, no conscious process of improvement they put themselves through, and therefore no chance of improvement. In fact, I would say that most retail traders are not actually taking trading seriously. They just want to click buy and sell after work. It's like a hobby for a lot of people, right? And that anything outside of clicking buy and sell, that's not very interesting to them, right? You know, if I'm not sitting there on my desk and click, 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 then I'm not really trading, right? That's a feeling of a lot of people. There's no discipline. And that's fine, right? I mean, for some people, it's fine that they get home from work and they click buy and sell with no real chance of developing as a trader, but it's probably better than watching the telly, right? So I think it's fine to have trading as a hobby. Um, but for the serious trading trader, you need a more rational approach uh, to consciously uh, learn and improve. Now, what I'm going to show you here, earning potential, this is based on people I know and working in the retail and professional industry, okay? So what I don't want to do too much is dwell on the, um, you know, the blown up accounts or the, I lost $25,000, but I haven't told my wife yet. So I, I do meet people like that every now and again. The, the first level of success in trading, kind of the bottom rung of the ladder, is I would have made money if it wasn't for those damn commissions. And that's very common with people trading multi-leg spreads. So if you're kind of the break-even trader and you're just about keeping your head uh, above water, that's actually the first level of success, right, as a trader. Now, typically, in a prop firm, the first profit for a professional trader in a proprietary trading firm, trading outright positions, usually they're targeting two or three hundred dollars a day, around that amount, with the imminent threat of being moved back to SIM uh, if they have a, a few bad days, and very, very tight control of risk. Now, the funny thing is, in a bricks and mortar prop firm, there's no fixed drawdown. They might say, you know, you, tell, you, know, you can't draw down more than $1,000 a day. If you do that, you're back on the sim. But you might have a day where Angela Merkel um, comes out and she says something about Brexit and the whole market takes a dive. They, a, prop, a real bricks and mortar prop firm generally won't penalize you for that. They'll say, okay, well, we understand why that day was an outlier right? But they do have generally very tight control of risk, but within reason, you know, within reason, because you, you can't, not everything's within control of the market. Uh, usually that that level, that two or $300 a day target, single strategy, very narrow focus, real walk before you run kind of trading, um, can be anywhere three, six, nine months before a trader's got to that level. There's been people in prop firms for two years uh, before they got to that level. It's uh, it's just just everybody's different. Um, usually, what I've seen a lot of people they're usually ready to give up and walk away before they actually get to that level. Um, as the trader progresses, you get these traders you get to about the two to four thousand dollar level. This is kind of an average day, so they're still having losing days, um, but they've reached a level of success that puts them basically way ahead of most retail traders. Right? They have a slightly wider range of setups and they've got a little bit more leeway in terms of size to trade. They're not the top dogs in the firm. They're the kind of bread and butter traders, right? Then you get guys for who, you know, serious money now. You start to get towards serious money, $10,000 a day, more size, more trust and management, more aggression at scaling to positions, the ability to switch quickly as the market changes pace. Well, the guy I talked, to about, talked about earlier made 20 k on a Mexican peso, Trade. He knows nothing about the Mexican peso, but he knows what he saw on the news, and he knows that the market was just running in one direction, and he jumped on a move, right? And that ability to switch when the markets change pace 
is a real differentiator between like an average trader and a good trader. An average trader will trade bread and butter trades day in, day out. Um, but the real skilled trader, these guys are making 10,000. Might, might, you know, on an outlying day where things are really running, they might pull in $40,000, right? And, um, you know, I know a fair, a fair amount of people at that level. Now, there are levels in between this, but there are very, very few traders. And I've only met three people at this level. And I'm not going to go into all of them. Um, there are some trades that progress to where they're regularly pulling in over $100,000 a day. In some cases, actually becoming a significant percentage of all the trade on an individual market. Now, I know a guy like this. He actually got banned from trading the FTSE for manipulation. I know another guy who was 30% of one of the exchanges in Singapore. He was 30% of the whole futures market, right? And uh, these are exceptional individuals. And I wouldn't even think that that should be a goal for most people because these are just kind of, they're just wired differently, right? Um, now, there might be traders above this. There might be traders pulling a million day, millions a day, but I have not met them, so I can't really talk about it. Now, there's a reason that this is important, right? First of all, you have to stop all of this minimum wage mentality I see out there, right? So I often ask people, so I sit down with people sometimes and say, okay, where do you want to be in 12 months' time? And they say, well, I'd like to be breaking even or I'd like to be paying for my commissions. And the, the only answer I've got to that is like, go and get a part-time job in McDonald's then. It'll actually pay you more unless you'll be meeting people, right? So you go into this at least partly for the money. So if you want to earn $1,000 a day from trading, don't be shy about it. Write it on your wall. That's your goal, right? Because considering how much time and effort you're going to put into this, if you take it seriously, there should be a decent reward. There should be a light at the end of the tunnel. Plus, as you're putting in the time, taking it seriously and putting in the effort, it's going to be a lot easier to stay on track, do the right things if you've actually got your sights on a decent goal. If you don't have any goal, it's kind of really easy to just, just flounder. But there's a much more important side to this, right? Think about this. If you go to any prop firm, there's a guy that teaches you, right? Now, the guy that teaches in the prop firm is teaching you this. So do you think, think about it, do you think the skills to make these two or three hundred dollars a day are the same as the skills that see you cornering 30 percent of a futures market or getting off kicked off the footsie for manipulating it or making a hundred thousand dollars a day is this level of a trader just the same as this guy scaled up and the answer is of course not right so who is teaching traders to corner a market like that to get to the point where they are 30% of all the contracts traded on the day on a particular futures market. Is it like a special course you can go on? You know, is it on the internet? Maybe if I can, you know, go on, it might be on a forum. And I'll tell you who's teaching it, absolutely nobody, right? It's just where certain traders end up. And it's a common place for an elite few. So they started off small and frequent and they gradually grew, which is what you need to do if you're not yet profitable. But they didn't just trade. The important thing is nobody taught them how to get where they ended up. They started off getting to that two or three hundred dollar level with a lot of hand holding. And in the process of that hand holding, they were also taught the feedback loop. They were also taught, taught to every day, sit down, review results, and use that information to kind of to, to improve, right? Which is why. Step one, because remember, we talked about a two-week plan, right, to becoming a better trader, and you probably think he hasn't said anything yet. Step one in our two-week plan, right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to select a single market to trade, right? Now, you're not going to get profitable on market replay. I have a lot of people come to me and say, Pete, um, I'm not available in the U.S. mornings, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get home from work at night, and I'm going to replay the U.S. mornings, and I'm going to get good and trade in that, right? And I always say to people like that, well, what's your long-term plan? What's your, what's, your, what's your plan? Are you going to give up your day job because you get really good at trading replay? Because I hope not. It seems really dicey. The best thing to do, basically, is, first of all, find a market to trade when you have free time, right? This isn't rocket science. As most people are working, it's generally the rest of the time they have to trade. Um, in U.S. evenings, there are Asian markets you can focus on. Um, if you're in California, you've, you can wake up at 6 a.m. and the market's already open, a great time if, you, if you're on that, um, in that part of the world. Um, if you're in Europe, you could trade the U.S. close after work. 
And in terms of somebody who is full-time employed, two hours a day is about a good target. After our, and this is for our two-week experiment, our two weeks, we're going to get you to do two hours a day. And after the two weeks, we're going to add some time onto that two hours a day. Now, any more than two hours a day for somebody that's working full-time is overkill, right? There needs to be some balance. And two hours a day is a lot of time to actually be intensely focused on something. So you do actually need time to unwind afterwards too. So even if you retired, in fact, two hours of intense focus is still a reasonable amount of work. So what you do is you find your two hours a day, and based on that, you're going to have a range of markets to choose from. You then need to narrow that range down based on two factors. And don't worry about getting this right first time. You know, this isn't like a one-time, two-week thing. But the two factors that will affect the market, you know, the, the market you choose, first of all, which of them has the sort of volatility profile you like. Some people like fast markets, some people like slow markets. If you say you want to trade crude, but you find it easier to, tra to, to read slow markets, you're not going to trade crude, right? So in a way, the market chooses you, you know, the, but generally it's by volatility. Second factor, which market is likely to give you multiple setups in the two hour period that we're actually going to be uh, doing this work. Because to get good at something, you're going to need to repeat it. So, so one trade a week isn't really going to cut it in that respect. You'd need to have superhuman patience to wait a year of one trade a week without changing or tweaking anything at all in your setup to get enough statistics to even evaluate that setup. Now, I have trouble getting people to go five days without tweaking their setup. So I know a year uh, is probably out of the question. So we need repetition because we need feedback as soon as possible to tell us if what we're doing is working out. Now, let's backtrack a, a, a minute. Um, what exactly do we mean by a setup? Or, or what is it that makes a good setup? Well, it's easy, actually, to think of what makes a terrible setup. And what makes a terrible setup is complexity. So I meet lots of traders who went out and created a method, which is a combination of all the things they got from the internet that sounded really clever. Things like multi-time frame analysis, day types, pre-market preparation, market profile, volume profile, and so many factors that they kind of jammed together that you couldn't actually make consistent decisions in any one particular moment. And that's aside from the fact that none of the individual factors that they jammed together or individual parts actually got tested individually, other than... Well, he sounded smart, right? So if you walk into a futures prop firm, all they use to trade off is the depth of market, right? Sure, they're going to look at a few charts before the market opens, but what they use to make trading decisions is a really simple price ladder and the ebb and flow of the market. Now, I'm not saying you have to do that, and I'm not saying you can't use market profile or any of the things I mentioned earlier, but you sure can't use too many things. And you can't use anything if you can't quantify how much that thing helps, right? So it's not enough to think one of the components of your setup works. It's not enough to read a book that says when this line crosses over that line, buy. You have to know, right? And if you've got setups now and you don't know if the things in your setup work, we're going to change that today because anything else is guessing. So when I talk about a setup, I'm talking about using a more rigid set of rules that limit what you can do. Something with higher frequency, something with less factors taken into account. Something where you're not trying to guess uh, what necessarily the bigger picture outcome is. But absolute limits for a two-week experiment or a two-week plan is one market and one setup in that market. And of course, this is where people in the audience think, well, to hell with that guy and his opinions. But if you've got 20 different setups or you're just trading off the cuff with no plan at all and you're not making money, um, you need to consider scaling back a bit just for two weeks and see what happens, right? Because if you aren't making money now, go back to one setup. If you can't make money on one simple setup, you will not make money on two, three, four, or five, and you won't make money trading a general opinion of where the market might end up. Now, Bear in mind that what we're talking about now is a journey uh, where profitable is not the end game, right? 
this is where the $100,000 a day people started. Profitable is a milestone, and the sooner you get to that milestone, the better. So the setup is basically something you've observed in the market that you believe causes a reaction fairly reliably. Now, I say believe because if you're not profitable right now, you probably don't know, but you will in two weeks. And if you don't have a setup, uh, choose something with cause and effect. Fading icebergs, looking for momentum, breakouts from small ranges, volume spikes. Um, very simple things that tend to be fairly reliable. And, and if you want, use indicators, candlestick patterns if you want to. It's not my cup of tea, but it doesn't really matter what you use for this first two-week experiment. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to stop trading for two weeks. Right. And I know nobody likes me now. But look, if you're on SIM still after three years, clicking SIM for the next two weeks isn't going to help. Okay. So let's just stop here for a second. And I want you to go back a few seconds and review what came into your head when I said stop trading for a couple of weeks. So many of you will have felt shock, revulsion, or, or at least some sort of negative reaction to this idea. Some of you just decided outright there and then, ignore everything else I tell you, right? So seriously, just take a minute now and go over what came into your head at the mention of not trading. Don't associate that feeling you had with negativity. Just observe how you're reactive. It's not a good or a bad thing. It's just a thing, right? Now, I know this because I've taken a lot of traders through the process I'm going to show you in a second, and this is the one they have the most trouble with. They equate clicking buy and sell to trading. They equate clicking buy and sell to working, to progressing. So traders that have gone nowhere in five years clicking buy and sell still feel that they need to be clicking buy and sell to progress. And it's an ingrained belief and behavior for many. And it's problematic because we need to discover if an edge works before we start trading it. So we can observe successful and failed setups with no emotional attachment. Because losing traders are basically making bets quite emotionally where they've got no idea of the outcome. So what they have now are things that they think influence the market, but they don't know how often, they don't know how far, they don't know if the opposite happens often enough to just reverse the setup. So it's not that they don't know the win rate. Um, you know, that it's not they just don't know the win rate, they don't know the best process approach to scaling, the kind of stop sizes they should be using. And uh, if you think sim trading will tell you the win rate of a setup, think again, because unless you're a robot, your sim trading will produce win rates lower than the setup has available. available. Because only when you execute perfectly can your win rate match what a setup gives. So even when you have a great setup, it takes time and practice to perfect the execution. So this is step three. What you do, two weeks, you observe the behavior, you observe the setup for two weeks, and you're looking to see in real time how often it occurs, what the outcomes are, what else was going on in terms of news, market state, you know, overall volatility, what the correlated or related markets were doing. Make notes make the sort of notes that you'll actually be able to use afterwards, right? If you're the analytical type, great, make statistics, build a spreadsheet, right? If you're an artist, paint a picture, whatever you're comfortable with actually going back to later. But the key here is not to judge anything. You are 100% completely impartial observer, right? You're gathering intel on the setup so that you can define some rules. Now, of course, you're going to be tempted to trade it. Now, the people I work with, I usually help them to choose, I usually help them choose something to look at. So usually people will come um, with a set of setups, with a preference, and we'll choose from the most likely candidates. Some people have setups that they really believe in, we start there. Some have absolutely nothing, but they're the exception generally speaking, and it's not hard to give somebody a place to start. So here's a good example of a trader that found he could anticipate whether a setup would fail before taking it, and that he actually had a second trade, a second setup, based on the first setup. Right? He actually had two setups. So when people do this, when you take a step back and you just observe, the feedback generally is one of not quite being able to believe what they're seeing, that this is actually some sort of magic trick. You know, like, how come I didn't see this stuff before? Or how could it possibly be that simple? And the fact is, for these people, 
the trading got in the way before. If you remove the trading from the equation just for a short period, you also remove the emotion. It's not guaranteeing you'll be profitable, but it's going to show that it's possible. So the comment here is typical. Uh, by observing neutrally, he's not only seeing that the setup has potential, he's also seeing other factors he thinks will help. And it's quite depressing that traders spend years getting nowhere, and then when you actually get them to take a step back, you can see lots and lots of stuff in just a few weeks. Now, these statistics here are from a trader that has two hours a day screen time available in the US morning, and what he's got is a fairly simple setup based on the ultra bonds. Now, this was his setup. I did often choose which one to focus on, but not that much. Um, I think he suggested it, and I said, yeah, that sounds good. That was my contribution. The key thing, though, is this trader was not profitable, and he'd been trying four or five years, and he was doing what a lot of people do. He was looking at lots of systems. He wasn't focused on trade frequency. He wasn't focused on time of day. He was trying to find lots and lots of setups so that there would always be one. Now, we can see how often this setup appeared each day. The, on, at the peak, it was 11 days, and on the day, it wasn't that good. You know, one setup, two setups, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. You know, for a, for a two-hour frequency, it's fairly decent, that. Plus, you've got to remember that the, the volatility of the markets kind of cycles up and down anyway. So you're going to get more setups on some days than others, right? Now, the ticks profit here. They're all theoretical because I told him not to trade, right? And they're all based on if he'd entered with market orders at the point he identified if when the setup was there, right? There's no optimistic fills. And that's the other reason you have to do this in real time. You can't go back and look at your charts after and mark all the setups. You can only count a setup that you see in real time, right? So overall, in the couple of weeks he observed, there were 240 ticks profit available trading one contract at a time, and ultra, bond, ultra bonds, it's $32 and change per tick. So imagine going from five years of going nowhere in trading to having this spreadsheet in front of you after two weeks, because that's what happened to this guy. After two weeks, he's got actual evidence over a sample of 63 trades that there is actually edge in what he's observing, right? Now, that is more progress than he'd make in six months of sim trading. Doesn't mean he's profitable yet, but he can clearly see an apparent edge. And this is something you can really work with as a trader. Okay, here's another one, different person, completely different technique. And of course, he's got his own style. And uh, I don't dictate to people how you need to record this information. He's German, very analytical. And, uh, you know, here's his statistics. Um, uh, what we've got, he's got a lot more statistics, but we can see a uh, number of breakouts he's looking and potential number of ticks here. And having these statistics gives people their confidence back. Suddenly, they know how to look at a market, how to assess the setup. If you've got, once you've done this once, you can actually do it with more setups, right? You, but the first time you really have to focus because it's a new thing, it's a skill you have to learn. And it gives you a degree of confidence that the market's previously beaten out of a lot of traders, that there really is some potential there, as opposed to just trying a technique, damn, it doesn't work, trying another technique, damn, it doesn't work, because it's just an execution problem. Now, what it also does, it keeps you on track. But the problem is, some traders just love to change stuff. They love to change their charts, their time frames, their trading rules, their approach, and it varies from person to person. But with the sort of plan we're talking about here, consistency is key. If you do one week of analysis and you change the rules, you're throwing away the first week's work. Now, these are actual communications with somebody going through this two-week process really badly. So what I did, I spent an hour with this guy discussing his two-week plan. All agreed, no problems, just observe for a few hours a day. But one of the reasons I do, the other reasons I do this, basically, is because some of these guys have been like hitting the market 16, you know, well, not 16, but eight. 10 hours a day, just draining themselves, you know, turn themselves into screen zombies. And, and part of this is just getting them to relax a little bit, right? So basically, all agreed, no problem. Observe for a few hours a day, relax the rest of the day. He had a decent setup to follow, and I thought there was a decent chance, you know, the trade location he was using would help him discover something 
even if it wasn't actually the, the setup he was investigating, right? So a lot of the times when people do this, they start off with one thing, but at the end of the two weeks, they've got three different setups that they're going to take forward, right? And, and partly because it's just because you observe, right? And um, so you can see anyway, he's diligent in recording the results, but there is a small issue here, right? Uh, he's still training it because he says, oh, what's the market behavior primarily without trading, okay? Not live, but on sim. But why? Why is it, right? Well, I think because, again, we said, we feel that if we're not clicking buy and sell, we're not progressing. And this trader could literally not bring himself to have two weeks off the buy and sell buttons. Anyway, I got a daily email for him, from him for the first three days saying how great it was going. And I'm thinking, well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you can just go and sim trade it. That not only could he do the observation part, he could trade it too because he could do so with no impact. So, of course, when I saw this, I'm like, eh, I don't know, man. You know, I didn't reply to him because, like, at the end of the day, it's not my job to, like, tell people what to do. I can only suggest, right? Because everybody has to do what they think is right, and nobody likes to be pushed around. Anyway, after day three, the updates were coming in a little bit less positive. On day eight, I was actually blessed with not one but two emails. In the first email at the top here, right, he's fighting the market. At this point, I'm not actually sure if he thinks he's still following the two-week plan to some extent or not. Because maybe it's just changed each day little by little until it's become totally unrecognizable. Anyway, so somehow we'd gone from observer setup for two hours a day to blowing up an account in eight trading days. Now, also now he's got this thing. We've, we've got a leaderboard. One of the things we've got at Jigsaw, we had this leaderboard, and it's a fun thing, and, you know, people could see where they're in relation to the traders. And, um, you know, I wanted to stay under the daily to, or, or be on the daily top 10. And it's like, I don't, where did that requirement of just sitting down and watch the market? And eight days later, he's like, my goal was to stay in the top 10. It also, it seems a little bit off scope to me. And then the frustration email comes. And now what's he doing? He's already looking for another method. The trouble is when he finds that other method, guess what? He's not going to execute it well initially. He's going to do exactly the same thing and round and round and round and round his circles he's going to go. So how did we get here? How did we get from, dude, just sit down for two weeks, watch the markets and observe, right? How did you get from that to eight days later, I need to change my whole method? Now, he's looking, as a, as a mention of uh, Mr. Gecko somewhere here, if I can find it up, oh, maybe it's not in there. But anyway, in the email... You mentioned Mr. Gecko, who was one of the guys who used to, he was at the top of the Jigsaw leaderboard for a long time. He's a trader that scales into trades, but he also works in a prop firm and has a lot of experience. So he starts to talk about that. I want that. I want to do what he's doing. What is he doing? Can you give me his email address? I want what they have. And of course, he wants what everybody else has. He just doesn't want to do the work, right? So the grass is looking much greener from where he's standing with his approach of, well, actually, I'm not sure what his approach was, to be honest. So at this point, it's intervention time, right? As I mentioned earlier, if you can't make money on one market, you're not going to make money on two, three, four, five, six. So this trader made a few common errors. First, in the first place, he had no idea if his setup had a positive outcome. And that's just something you need to figure out before you start clicking buy and sell. You know, and that's what the two-week program is all about. Figure out if it actually makes sense what you're doing. He traded it anyway, and every losing trade made him feel bad. Instead of a losing trade being a check mark on a spreadsheet, it was a failure to him. Okay? Now, just think about it. Right? Think about yourself. You take a sim trade, and you, and you start starts to go against you, and you get out. What do you do? Do you, really, do you really focus on the market and watch the action as the trade moves against you and then you get out and it moves further and further against you, proving you're more and more wrong. How focused are you on that? Not very. You're probably looking away, having a quick glance on Facebook saying, crap, another losing trade. Because you, you've, got emotional, uh, you've got emotional commitments you, you, you know, with that trade. If you, just set, if you just observe a setup, oh, there's a setup there, and then you watch it play out and it goes against what your, what your premise was, but you're not in a trade, you observe, you can observe and watch that without any emotion getting in the way, right? 
So a few of these failures, a few of these sim failures with no knowledge of actual win rate of the setup or anything like that, your emotions get in the way, just like it does with 99% of people trying to learn how to trade. And do you know what? There's simply no need to let that happen. So what next? Well, so you found your time to trade, you found your market, you found your setup, you go through your two weeks. By the end of the two weeks, you'll be aware um, of the major discoveries anyway, but you do need to sit down and just go over your notes, right? And the things you're going to figure out, is there merit in what you looked at or is it just kind of a break-even thing, right? Um, in some cases, it's going to fail so well that you can take the reverse setup. In other cases, simple fact of just taking a step back and observing has led you to a different setup. In fact, that's probably what happens in 50% of cases. In many cases, it'll be time to define entry and exit rules. So you might have a low win weight system with a great risk reward, which to be honest is the best kind of system you can have in my opinion. Um, in which case, some you might want to consider scaling in. You might want to be all in, all out. You know, so consider how you want to play it. Um, might be a very short-term scalp, so you might be, be all in, all out. But you will have the information needed to kind of make that decision. What are my targets? What are my stops? Then that's when you go on to sim. But when you go on to sim, you need to carry on writing these notes, right? Carry on with your notes and writing the statistics because your sim trading is not immediately going to match the potential of that setup. So you might find in the two weeks the setup was 80%, but as you trade it, you're fumbling your way to 40% in the first week. Doesn't mean the setup's wrong. So keep track of both the way the setup performs and your own results, right? And don't gut feel the results either. Review. So at the end, um, I mean, <laughs> at the end of the week, review. I had a trader a couple of weeks ago. He contacted me and said I had a really bad week. And I said, let's pull up the stats. And I said, you won 70% of your trades. Did I? You know, and so sometimes you don't really, sometimes your perspective can be skewed by just the previous day. Um, and there are additional steps, you know, to take after this. But I did say, I just want to take you through the first two weeks. Okay. So it's a really simple plan. It's just simple common sense. And the common sense is figure out if something works properly with a structured approach before you start trading it, right? Find out the expectancy, how far the market goes your way on winners, how far it goes against your winners, how you really know a loser is a loser. Then you can decide how to trade it. Then you're much better equipped how to trade it, knowing that when you start trading it, you're probably going to suck a little bit, right? Because you're new to it. Okay, so we're talking about something that will point out clearly whether something works and when it works and when it doesn't. Like one of the guys um, that went through this, he's come to this realization, which probably many of you will realize now, once you realize that um, you're going to suck at something the first time you do it, which includes new trading methods. Um, this guy's realized that in the past he's had trade ideas that were probably fine, but he just ditched them too early right, because he didn't really understand how to evaluate a setup, right. Now, you don't have to follow my two-week approach. You can make your own variation. This is just something I've found that, um, that people have got on very well with. And it's just part of that process of becoming a better trader. So it's not just about finding an entry. That's really simple, right. It's about specializing in that entry, consistently reviewing the results, and making sure that your training experience becomes a learning experience by reviewing, right? If you don't want to do it, that's fine, but also don't have the expectancy that just by coming to the market and clicking a trade setup is going gonna, is gonna to yield results. It does take a little bit more of that to become a successful trader. If you ever get to meet a proprietary trader, have a chat with them about, about the review process, right? So even the traders that are making tens of thousands of dollars are still doing reviews when they have outliers, some might not do it every day. I mean, I know one of the best traders I know right now, he's in the office at 6 a.m. every morning and every evening, he trades a long day and every evening he's doing a review. And it's just, it's just the way he is. He's just very diligent about it and he's, and he's yielded results and there's been days uh, where, he's, where he's made over $100,000 a day. Um, in fact, you know, in the, in the, 
the the late uh, 2018. I think he made a, a million dollars in in one week. I think six days of trading he made a million dollars with all Brexit volatility. And um, you don't have to do the work he's doing. You don't have to be as committed as him. But you do have to, you know, you do have to have this feedback loop, right? You have to know that you're going to learn a technique. You're going to trade it. You've got to analyze the results. And it's this analysis of your results that teaches you how to adjust your trading. A good example would be a trader that's closing all their trades too early, right? If Once you know, um, you know, you do your trading, sorry, and then you analyze and you figure out, I'm closing my trades too early, right? I actually need a really high win rate. And, you know, you can see you might have a trading plan that's got like a target of um, 20 ticks on your trades, but you can see you're closing at five, you're closing at three, you're closing at eight, you're closing at 20, you're closing at seven. And um, you can look at that and then you can start to figure out, well, how am I going to get around that? So you've learned, you've learned something. Now, as you go into your trading, you're going to then work on that. And that's how you improve, right? Whatever, any, all that anybody can teach you in terms of trading technique is basically um, just getting the ball rolling for you. Everything else you're going to get in trading is going to be what you learn um, from observation. Okay, and like I say, that's what the prop traders are doing. Now, well, we'll talk about what Jigsaw does. As you can see, there's a few screenshots in here. Um, one of the things we do at Jigsaw that kind of differentiates us is we actually try and have something for you for each uh, part of that cycle. So we do have education. We do have a training platform. But we do also, as, as Carly talked earlier, we have um, an amazing set of analytics tools which helps you do the review. Now, I'm not saying you have to use our tools for this, but you do need some, uh, some kind of approach. So the way we do this is we actually have different packages. We have like an independent package and a professional package because there's basically two types of trader, right, that we come across. There's a type of trader that are looking to improve their existing techniques. They're already okay with what they've got. They're already nearly there. And they want to improve. So we've got this independent package that's got 10 hours of the best order flow education available. And there's an additional seven hours with the professional package. And that seven hours is mostly covering specialist topics, information you're going to come back to again and again. Um, this isn't about education you're going to watch once. It's actually about layering in techniques, getting the benefit from one set of neat techniques before moving on. We do a lot of focus on trade management, very early part of the trade management almost managing the first part you trade like a scalper. Um, that's not something you need at the, at the start for everybody. It might be something that you focus on um, at the start. You know, you might, leave, you might come back to it in a year's time. So we have that, but we also have the fact that you might not understand what's in the video. So if you get confused, you can actually come and chat with us on Skype or in a, a, a chat room. And um, then there's other people that feel they don't have anything to improve upon. Sometimes that's people who've been in the market 5, 10, 15 years. So the institutional package that we have, um, that actually includes the education above plus uh, an, a, a course from a proprietary trading firm in London. So a proprietary trading firm we work with, and we work them together on this. Um, so that's a complete short-term trading course. It's got 19 setups, lots of drills, so that you both learn and experience the style being taught. Um, and as well as the education drills, there's also six hours of live trade videos from a London prop trader covering a week's worth of live trading where you see the trades on a live account, blow by blow, with blow by blow explanations of what's being done and why. And there is like literally nothing else in this industry that you can buy that matches that in terms of getting actual trading from a professional, some, from somebody uh, from a firm that's actually, that actually makes their money from trading. And what we're going to do for the next 10 people who sign up, um, we're going to let you upgrade um, to that for free. So as you can see, the professional is 879. Uh, we're dropping that to 579. Institutional, 1799. We're dropping that to 1499. You go to jigsawtrading.com slash Carly, type in the coupon code Carly, and you'll get that discount. If you don't type in the coupon code Carly, you won't get the discount. Okay, so that's your first uh, exam. Now, what I'd like to do is see if you've got any questions. I'm not sure if I can see questions in the chat. Um, so Carly might need to help with that. Do we have any questions about that two-week plan? Was it clear, unclear? Makes sense? So far, no questions. So you must have explained it very well. Yeah, I knocked it out of the park, Carly. 
<laughs> yes, you did. I got to admit, that was awesome. Yeah, I've got it. some. Yeah, I've got some stalkers in here though as well. <laughs> <laughs> I know how that goes. Yeah. Uh, I want to apologize to everybody for the audio issues. I will have to figure out what happened and why and fix that for the next time. I apologize. Um, just as an FYI, though, we did record everything, so once we get the video, um, you know, produced and everything, we'll post it on the website and send links out. So if you did miss the first part because of audio issues, then we'll make sure you get the entire class. Um, let's see. Still no questions. You're awesome. <laughs> That's fantastic. Good. Well, it's, uh, it's 4.30 here. I've got the school running two hours. Um, <laughs> so I know I'm just going to toss up between bed and coffee. Uh, I'd go with coffee. Thank you for coming, Peter. I know it's a really odd time of day for you. We appreciate it. And uh, like I said, it's always fun having you. Thanks for having us, Carly. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody, for coming.